Hi guys, I'm John Bazaar. This is uh, my channel, uh, The Caveman's Man Cave. I call it that because as far as uh, a machinist is concerned, uh, I'm a bit of a caveman compared to people like Tom Lipton and uh, Stan and Adam Booth and guys like that. Um, but I do like to mess around in the shop and uh, I do have some projects that I work on uh, from time to time and uh, I don't mind sharing them this is pretty much my first video although there are others that are in various stages of uh, compilation but they'll only be bits and pieces because uh, they were my first crack and they were experiments and they didn't come out so well so I'll probably put those together as uh, short ones just to put them up show everybody what I've been uh, working on but this one is my first full halfway decent video we'll see how it turns out um, it'll be in, in pieces what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna cut a couple of bevel gears and uh, uh, I'll show you some of the um, some of the work that I'm, I'm doing as part of that process. The blanks are already done; they're ready to go in the mill to uh, to to cut the teeth. And uh, I'm in the process of setting my horizontal mill up uh, to uh, to do that. It's a uh, it's off to my left here. It's a brown and sharp uh, light number two universal mill, and uh, I'll be putting the uh, the arbor and cutter and the overarm supports on uh, shortly, and finish setting up the dividing head so that uh, I can cut the first gear. Uh, as I get to that, uh, I'll uh, bring you in and show you the as many of the details as it makes sense to do, at least to me on my first try at posting videos. <clears throat> so, uh, if you enjoy it, click the, click the like. Uh, if you really enjoy it, hit subscribe. Um, I'm doing this purely for the fun of doing it, and uh, I, I, I want to share it with, with the rest of the YouTube community. So sit back, grab some popcorn, have some fun, make fun of me. That's okay. I do it myself anyway. So um, enjoy yourselves. Thanks. Okay. I wanted to give you a look at the uh, the gear blanks themselves. This is the the main gear, and uh, I've blued this section of the gear because I'm only going to cut teeth in this area. I don't want this gear to rotate 360 degrees. In fact, I only want it to rotate about a little over 60 <clears throat> from stop to stop let's see if I can show you the detail a little bit in this view so you're going from 54 degrees from center of that of this particular cut and that's from center of cut to center of cut. And then you're going another nine degrees from that center line to this last cut. And these are 16 pitch gears, as I, as I said, and there are to be 14 fully formed teeth. <clears throat> the orientation of this is important on, on the particular part that we're making here. Um, for reasons which will be clear once I show you how this whole thing gets assembled. Um, 
But for, for now, the most important thing for people to remember is I need to rotate this much. And, and, and it needs to stop. I cannot allow it to overrun, which is why this is designed the way that it is. <clears throat> Something to keep in mind with these uh, gears, um, they're not high speed, high precision gears. That will allow me to take some liberties as far as cutting and clearances and tolerances. I am using uh, AGMA, AGMA, American Gear Manufacturer Association guidelines as far as I can, but there will also be some, some deviations from that. So that's for the main gear. And let's get to the, the pinion. Okay. The pinion is going to be cut with 12 teeth in it all the way around the circumference. <clears throat> um, again, I've taken a few liberties, not too many, but uh, because I don't need the precision that uh, a high speed gear would, would require. Out of Machinery's Handbook for Bevel Gears, the, uh, I'm referencing uh, rules and formulas for calculating dimensions of milled bevel, gear, milled bevel gears. And what I'm looking for in particular here is the whole depth of tooth, which is the, essentially the depth of cut. Uh, and this, the rule is to divide 2.157 by the dimetral pitch. In my case, the, di the dimetral pitch is 16. So W equals 2.157 divided by P. Uh, come down here, substituting in for P, W is 2.157 divided by 16. And uh, over here on my calculator, The depth of cut is 0.1348, and I'm going to round that off to 0 0.135. <clears throat> so that's the information I need to get started. Um, I'm going to go away for a little while and start working on some of my setups, and uh, we'll come back. Okay, uh, of course I've got two of these arbor supports that uh, needed to be torn apart, cleaned up, and uh, some minor repairs made. Um, I've done all that. I didn't do it on screen for a couple of reasons. They were done over a period of time at different locations. This particular one especially had been dropped and the sight glass had been smashed. Um, this was the original sight glass. And uh, it was glass and, uh, and an O-ring in there. Uh, I looked for a replacement online, could not find what I needed. So what I did was I went to McMaster Car and ordered a couple of sight glasses. They're, they're in a plastic housing and they're threaded. Uh, my friend Sam and I cut the threads down and fitted it to this hole so it slid in. And uh, 
I uh, put some silicone adhesive on there and that's what's holding it in place. And that should work for now. My intent is to make new sight glasses for this fitted to this piece. Um, which I can do. I just need to make a couple of uh, dies and uh, fixtures to uh, to get the shape that I need here. I'll make it out of uh, stainless steel. I, that looks like probably about uh, I don't know 20 gauge steel. That's nickel plated steel. That's not uh, that's not stainless. So anyway, when I tore it all apart, of course, something that's been sitting around in somebody else's shop for many years and kicked around in the dirt and etc. was uh, pretty cruddy. So I took it all apart, and cleaned it all out. Now I get to put it back together again. <clears throat> I'm going to start with this bushing. And, and it's kind of the reason why I'm doing this on video. I didn't realize this, but the bushings were tapered, so I didn't know that when I, until I took it apart. Um, and they're tapered so that you can adjust the clearance. There's a piece, of, I don't know if that's Bakelite or what that is for sure. I don't want to break it, so I'm not going to mess with it. But if you tighten this bushing down and pull it into the uh, housing, I'm going to get lined up here. Where is it? There it is. There we go. As you pull it into the housing, it clamps it down tighter. And that allows you to take up, you know, as the bushing wears, you can take up some of the, uh, some of the uh, extra clearance. So let me get to that. Oh, put my oil can down. hear a fan running in the background so it's a little warm today and uh, I need the air moving in my shop. I do not have air conditioning and I'm not going to be putting air conditioning in for the foreseeable future so I have to uh, suffer the old-fashioned way. We used to do it in my dad's shop too. He didn't have air conditioning, so. Oops. Okay, that should get me about to where it was before I took it apart. I will have to adjust the clearances when I put the armor in. Uh, and that'll be done shortly. Another part of this, at least on this design, this has an oil pump. This is an oil reservoir, and of course this is an oil sight glass, and there's an oil passage that goes down in and, and uh, supplies oil to that bushing. <clears throat> The uh, connection between here and here is a capillary tube. It's a bra um, copper capillary tube. So I started to take this completely apart and uh, came up against that and decided I wasn't going to destroy the capillary tube trying to take everything apart because I didn't know where I would be able to get a replacement. And uh, when I put the other one together. I've already done all of this on the other piece. When I put that together, 
it uh, the oiler worked fine. <clears throat> Since that one worked okay, I'm going to just not mess with this one. I think the reason why I couldn't get it apart was everything was so badly corroded. But if it's going to work, then I don't really need to take it apart. Okay, now for the next part of this. This is the cap, this is the plunger, spring loaded. It's a very simple device and it works pretty pretty neat. Gotta tell you those old timers knew what they were doing. to chase that thread that seems to be a little dirt in there. I had one on the other one like that too. Let's get these others set in and then do that. Well, that doesn't sound good. It's supposed to go down in quite a bit deeper than that. So maybe I have two of them to do. That one's in there correctly. And of course on the previous owners of this painted it probably two or three times different colors Someday I might take this apart, strip the paint off of it, and repaint it. But since I have uh, a job to do right now, I gotta take the Keith Fenner approach and get her done. That's okay. Could be doing what I used to do. just a little bit of paint or something that's gotten down inside there. Just enough to be annoying. Yep, yeah, that's what it is. In the process of my cleaning, I used brake clean, so probably washed some down in there and it resolidified re down near the bottom. This one's going to argue with me, I think. That one's seated where it's supposed to be good. Let's get this one. Oh, this one's going to make me get a tap handle out.
See, this isn't bad, just a little bit too stiff for my arthritic fin fingers. There we go. We're down in there pretty good. I think that's all pretty well cleared out. Yeah, just a little bit, bit of dunking away. Okay. I'm going to scrape some of that paint off so it doesn't get down inside. Okay, the next step is fill it up with oil and check to make sure it works. Okay, I've got it filled with oil. I put uh, synthetic 10W30 in it. That should give me a good lubricant for the, uh, for the arbor. Give this plunger a few pushes and see if I can push oil down in where it needs to go. We should have had oil in there by now. Well, the last part to put in anyway is, is this locking device. I'll put that in and then uh, investigate the oil issue. And then come back once I've got that resolved. <laughs> 